Florida State gets a win in court, and we officially have chaos. Welcome into the channel. I am John Kurtz. Here on this channel, we talk conference realignment, college football, and college basketball all day, every day. Please consider subscribing if you have not. Live shows on Wednesdays and Sundays, they are a blast. Make sure you get in there. People from all corners of the college football world, it is a great time. Subscribe, click the bell so you know when it is that I'm going live. Please like the video and let me know what you think in the comments. Is Florida State going to come out victorious when this is all said and done? Let me know what you think. So there was a long, long court battle yesterday. It went much longer than anticipated. And shout out to guys like Matt Baker from the Tampa Bay Times, who you've seen on this channel before, who stuck it out for the whole thing and gave us a great report afterward and a synopsis on what went down. You have two lawsuits going on, one in North Carolina between the ACC and Florida State, one in Florida between Florida State and the ACC. This was in Florida. Leon County, Florida is where we were yesterday. Tallahassee. Uh, so I'm going to read to you from Matt Baker's story here to get the synopsis of what happened. Near the end of the arguments in Tuesday's seven-hour legal hearing between Florida State and the ACC, a hypothetical scenario started to feel real. What if dueling lawsuits between the Seminoles and their conference kept unfolding simultaneously in Florida and North Carolina? Quote, then we do have chaos, ACC attorney James Cooney said. Buckle up. Now those are Matt Baker's words. Buckle up, because what happened is... We are going to continue to have both lawsuits going on simultaneously. So what earlier was said by the ACC attorney, hey, that would be chaos if we have that because the ACC was hoping to not have that. Unfortunately, that's what they're going to get. And from a content standpoint, that is better for all of us, right, to have chaos in two dueling lawsuits going on between the ACC and Florida State. A Leon County judge, John C. Cooper, denied the ACC's motion to postpone Florida State's lawsuit against the league in Tallahassee. Cooper's ruling from the bench comes less than a week after a Charlotte judge issued his mirror opinion that the ACC's lawsuit against Florida State will continue in North Carolina. That means the nine-figure future of the Seminoles, the league, and nationwide conference realignment will continue playing out in two different courtrooms in two different states under two sets of applicable laws at the same time. <laughs> Just crazy. But honestly, doesn't it seem like the most college football thing ever that we have not only the lawsuits going on at the same time, one league suing a school, a school suing the league, but then you have two different sets of jurisdictions and laws in either place. Everything very convoluted, nothing making sense, nothing seemingly being streamlined. That's that's college football in general right now, right? Whenever there's something that makes sense, college football typically is going to go in the opposite direction. We're not going to do things like this Super League proposal recently that would actually make sense for the health of the sport. It's not what we do. That's not how we operate. So it's appropriate that that's how it's going in the courtroom as well. And another issue here, as Baker points out, is the dueling lawsuits between Clemson and the conference in both Carolinas add complexity to when, how, and if two of the ACC's biggest heavyweights could leave. Yeah, oh, by the way, Clemson is suing the ACC, and they're getting sued at the same time. Those are not taking place in the same state. You have South Carolina and North Carolina there. So we have Three different states being the venues for four different potential cases here between the two schools and the ACC. Baker says the ACC had hoped for a different outcome when it sued Florida State on December 21st, a day before Florida State's trustees met to sue the conference first. Cooper took issue with some of the ACC's filing. He had questions about whether the conference followed its voting protocols before or after it filed its complaint in Charlotte. The ACC's presidents and chancellors approved an amended lawsuit against Florida State during a special January 12th virtual meeting. ACC officials have said the vote was unanimous among present members, but have not said who was present. Uh, okay, so was Florida State actually present there? So Cooper is, again, the Leon County judge. So Cooper is the one who had questions about all of this, whether the conference followed protocol on that. Uh, on Tuesday, Cooney, who is the ACC's lawyer, said 12 members were there. That means three of the 15 members were not. Florida State wasn't invited, according to the emails obtained by the Tampa Bay Times. Okay, there's some good journalistic work with open records by the Tampa Bay Times. Clemson said it never authorized the suit, so the Tigers weren't there either. That leaves one other unspecified ACC school that sat out the vote. North Carolina, perhaps, being the other school that seems to be the most involved here and could join in in this parade of lawsuits regardless of the participants cooper said it seemed like part of a rush to the courthouse or forum shopping two things that are legally frowned upon 
So the judge is saying, like, look, you guys rushed this thing through, not inviting Florida State, not inviting Clemson, not inviting a couple of schools to make sure you could do this just to try and beat the suit that you knew was coming. And forum shopping is like, hey, you're trying to make sure that this takes place in a state where the laws are most advantageous to you or the entire court setup could be most advantageous to you. So you're trying to forum shop this and get everything to happen in North Carolina because you thought that would be better than Florida, both things that are legally frowned upon. And that seemed to be a huge part of the discussion yesterday in the court proceedings. Uh, other factors were at play too. Cooper suggested the state of Florida's broad open records law could mean some documents like the TV contract between ESPN and the ACC should be public in Florida, but maybe not in North Carolina. Okay, there's that dueling jurisdictions thing, right? Different laws in different states. And this is a huge, huge issue because ESPN very much does not want these out there. ESPN was petrified when it got out that they actually had that option in 2027 to cut off the TV deal with the ACC. And it may not actually be as crazy long as we all assumed that it was based on the information that was publicly out there. So ESPN clearly does not want, they claim trade secrets and all that. They don't want any of that getting out there. Uh, Florida State's here for chaos. And Florida State's here for all of that getting out there. Uh, Baker says that contract is a sticking point in this dispute and has made some key figures tricky to pin down. Here is an interesting nugget uh, from what happened yesterday in court. Florida State said initially its total cost to leave the ACC would be $572 million, which is an exit fee of about $130 million, plus withheld TV revenue through 2036. Or as FSU attorney Peter Rush said, that's 12 years of TV rights for, quote, what should have been the national champions home games, <laughs> a reference to the Seminoles college football playoff snub. I mean, this has everything, dude. We've got references to the college football playoff snub from the attorneys. I mean, look, the, the guy is doing right by his clients. That, that's what Florida state would want. Make sure you throw in there that we got screwed by the college football playoff like this. This has it all. It's just college football written all over it. But what Florida State's legal counsel said is it's actually not $572 million anymore. That's not the figure we're going to go with. It's more like $700 million. So Florida State has now upped the ante there saying, hey, they're trying to hold us hostage for $700 million here. Whether the specific number would be, it's massive, uh, whatever the specific number would be, it's massive. That was part of Russia's argument. If a Florida entity risks losing or paying almost three quarters of a billion dollars, that decision needs to come from a Florida court. So they're saying like, no, come on. You can't postpone this here and let everything get decided in a different state in North Carolina. This is a Florida entity. If we're on the hook for $700 million, we better get that decision made right here in our home state. Quote, this is Florida State's money, Rush said. This is Florida State's team. This is Florida State's media rights. There's your argument from uh, Florida State's legal team. Uh, Cooper agreed enough to decide that the state of Florida has a major stake in this litigation's outcome. That means it's continuing here, even as it persists in North Carolina. So the judge agreed like, hey, fair point. You guys have a huge stake in this. It's in Florida. We should continue this in Florida. Uh, though FSU said in a filing Tuesday that it will appeal last week's opinion to the North Carolina Supreme Court. So they're, they're still not done with the previous ruling that it allowed everything to stay in the North Carolina case. Uh, Tuesday's hearing in room 3G of the Leon County Courthouse initially was scheduled for 90 minutes, but after three hours, the judge hadn't even finished his first talks with the ACC. Crazy. Uh, by the end of the day, many issues remained unsolved, uh, unresolved, rather. Cooper did not hear any arguments for and against the conference's motion to dismiss FSU's case or matters related to discovery. The hearing is scheduled to continue on April 22nd. So we went like seven hours after it was supposed to be an hour and a half. That's where we're at. If only college football could find a way to sell commercials there. If Florida State could get somebody in, some advertisers to sell commercials in this thing, then we would really have something in college football. Make a little money off that. Get Fox involved here. Have them show it. And uh, they can finally have their presence in the state of Florida. Uh, I kid. But man, all of this just seems very on brand for where it's headed right now. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hop in the live shows Wednesdays and Sunday nights. They are a blast. Please like the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Who's going to come out victorious in this whole battle? Is it Florida State or is it the ACC? I will talk to you soon. Take care.